All right, well, the Young Turks, Jay, you ran experiment with you guys. Uh, big show ahead as usual. Uh, Trump madness. I like. I know. I keep saying the Twenty Fifth Amendment, guys. He, they, he's crazy. He's totally lost his mind. So that's a story a little bit later in the program. Uh, Jake now uses that hashtag in his emails to us. Yeah, when he's like pitching a story that we should do on the show. <laughs> I just do hashtag Twenty Fifth Amendment. <laughs> I'm gonna start doing it about other people that aren't even president. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, there's a lot of candidates. All right, did they really have concrete in the milkshakes that they threw at uh, conservative writer in Portland? We're gonna break that down for you guys. Uh, lots to get to, uh, tell you about Ocasio-Cortez. We're about to tell you about her right now, so uh, let's do it, let's get started. Following AOC's visit to an El Paso migrant detention center, of course, there is right wing spin, even though the heart of the story should be that migrants are being mistreated, abused, and kept in unsanitary conditions at these centers. Well, there's a right wing writer for Washington Examiner. Now, let me be clear Washington Examiner is a right wing publication. Her name is Anna Giratelli, and she is saying that according to her sources, AOC was yelling at border patrol agents while she was visiting the detention center. Here's her tweet, she says, uh, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez screamed at federal law enforcement agents in a threatening manner during a visit to a US border patrol facility in El Paso Monday afternoon and refused to tour the facility according to two people who witnessed it. Now, let me be clear in that she is not a source that should be trusted. In fact, she had, and this is something that uh, Jordan Ewell brought up, she had claimed that there were um, prayer rugs at the border, that ranchers were finding Muslim prayer rugs at the border. And this was all meant to push this narrative that dangerous Muslims are trying to enter the United States at our southern border. That story was debunked. So again, she's not a source that should be trusted. But I also want to be clear about one other thing. Considering ProPublica's reporting, which indicates that 9,500 Border Patrol agents, both current and former, were in this private Facebook group putting out disgusting, sexually degrading um, content about AOC. I wouldn't really mind if she yelled at them, right? Yeah. Especially considering what she saw when she went to that detention center and what she witnessed with the abuse of these migrants. So I have many things to say. First, uh, to the Border Patrol agents who were such tough guys uh, when they were doing their Facebook group. Oh, um, we'll give money to the agent who throws a burrito at these bitches is what they wrote. Oh yeah. Referring to AOC and another female congresswoman who also happened to be Latina. And they uh, talked about hoes and they talked about all these things and how they were gonna do this and that. And now, if it's even remotely true, they go running to conservative media crying. Oh my God, AOC was mean to us, mommy, will you protect us? Are you crying? Are you crying? It's incredible. I mean, they will sit there and laugh about, make jokes about migrants who have died under their watch. And then they turn around and they cry when someone allegedly yelled at them. Again, I don't know if she yelled at them or not, right? I don't trust the no, source. No, no, I don't believe it at all. Yeah. It's actually now warped because all conservative rumors and conspiracy theories warp immediately. It started with speaking to them in a threatening manner. How she, she, she explained, it's like I'm 5'4", threatening how, right? And you guys have guns. So what threatening how, what does that even mean, right? Uh, and then it became yelling, and then it became yelling, screaming, and crying. There are no reports of her crying. I know. <laughs> this is all made up. And and look, you the the other story that this reporter made up is, is so preposterous. Reporter. I know, reporter, right? It's so preposterous that anyone who would believe that and then and put it uh, out as a real news story, I mean, you just have to realize that they're at a bare minimum, their judgment is. Horrific, let alone the fact that they're likely just making things up on purpose for their propaganda, which is what conservatives normally do. Prayer rugs at the border, really? From Juan Ben Ramirez? Okay, what are you, what are, it's obviously to scaremonger people like, oh my God, they're all brown. And they, I can't tell the Mexicans from the Arabs. There's prayer rugs. You know what one of them turned out to be? They're like, we have evidence, we have all. Oh, everybody's like, really? Let's take a look. 
It's the only picture they ever showed. Turns out it was a soccer jersey. Of course. <laughs> of course. Everybody knows that um, <laughs> devout Muslims like yeah. to pray, but pray on soccer jerseys. Oh yeah, that's I mean, a well-known. I mean, it is well the prayer fact. rug of yeah. choice. No, but I want to also remind you guys of the story that ProPublica broke because let's not get distracted by nonsense and and false stories coming from the right. So again, this is from the ProPublica piece, perhaps the most disturbing post, and this is again from that private Facebook page, perhaps the most disturbing post target Ocasio-Cortez. One includes a photo illustration of her engaged in oral sex at a migrant detention center. Texts accompanying the image reads, Lucky illegal immigrant glory hole special starring AOC. So they, that's when AOC had not come into the building and they were tough guys. Mm -hmm. Then AOC comes to the building and they're like, oh, oh, she, she was threatening us, she was threatening us. What happened, tough guys? When it's little kids and you lock them up in cages, you're really tough. When they die and you spit on them proverbially and say, Hey, if he dies, he dies. That's a direct quote from one of these Facebook posts. You're a tough guy, right? When AOC is not in the building, you're talking about this, that, and other thing, and you're so tough. She comes in the building, you start shaking, you start shaking. And then you go run to conservative mommy and say, mommy, mommy, she threatened me. Oh, You're so tough, and that's the thing with all bullies. They're not actually tough at all, it's insecurity that breeds it. And so they wanna go take it out on defenseless people, because in reality, they're not tough at all. Let me give you more. Another is a photo illustration of a smiling President Donald Trump forcing Ocasio Cortez's head toward his crotch. The agent who posted the image commented, That's right, bitches. The masses have spoken, and today democracy won. I will give them credit for acknowledging that Donald Trump likes to sexually assault and rape women. Yeah, it's probably not. Well, like with a lot of conservatives, they celebrate that. And that's why they were celebrating that image. So um, to use your vernacular, um, now that a congresswoman, by the way, the youngest female congresswoman ever in United States history has come into the building and, uh, and actually stood up for the defenseless, do you feel threatened, bitches? <laughs> so you like to use those terms, right? Now they'll cry about this, I guarantee it. Are the good people of Border Patrol doing their jobs and crushing those people and making sure they never get any showers and, and making sure they're locked up in cages and if they die laughing at them. Are you impugning their motives? God damn right I am. And if she didn't yell at them, I wish she had. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, like the story is being reported by conservatives as if even if it were true, it would be a bad thing. No, these are people who are abusing their power. Now we know that the right wing doesn't see this as a bug, but rather a feature. And so instead of focusing on the fact that now dozens of migrants have died under Border Patrol custody, and instead of focusing on how they're being kept in unsanitary conditions and they, they're just being abused every single day, they've decided we're gonna go after AOC because she allegedly yelled at Border Patrol agents, please. Um, now let me give you AOC's response quickly, um, this is graphic six, she says, to these CBP officers saying they felt threatened by me, they were literally discussing making a GoFundMe for an officer who attacked uh, attacked me on my tour. They confiscated my phone and they were all armed. I'm 5'4". They're just upset I exposed their inhumane behavior. Here, she is, here. that is a leader. That right there is a leader and Nancy Pelosi should take note. No, I, I believe she has taken note. <laughs> um, and um, and let me give you a yeah. statement that she just recently gave to Yahoo News, um, because Yahoo asked her, you know, do you think we're really headed toward fascism? And here's her exact quote: Are we headed to fascism? Yes. I don't think there's a question. If you actually take the time to study and to look at the steps and to see how government transforms under authoritarian regimes and look at the political decisions and patterns of this president, the answer is yes. Man, she doesn't scare easily. So if you're gonna come at her, you're gonna have to come a little stronger than that. And you can tell again, they're just bullies. And the minute you push back, they cower and they should. And what I was gonna say is that, look, 9,500 people were on that Facebook group. There's only 20,000 Border Patrol agents. 
So it, it doesn't mean that everybody in that group was border patrol, but obviously a lot of people there were border patrol or connected to border patrol. So that's a huge percentage, it's not a few bad apples. It is, uh, I'm sure that there are a few good apples mixed in with quite a rotten lot. And most importantly, led by rotten leaders like Donald Trump, who encourage their worst side rather than their best side. All right, let's move on to the next story. Texas Representative Joaquin Castro was part of the uh, the Hispanic Caucus delegation that is visiting migrant detention centers throughout the country. And after visiting uh, the El Paso, Texas detention center, um, it was noted that he actually smuggled his phone inside. Now remember, they're not allowing members of Congress to show up with any type of filming equipment, but he managed to get his phone inside and he took video of what he saw. Now, we're gonna toss in the video, but remember, they did try to clean things up before members of Congress showed up. And even with that in mind, here's what the scene looked like. Yes. So I, I, the updated medicine, which uh -huh. I, I'm not going to break for patient confidentiality, but the updated medicine I just looked at her medical was the new surgery going on. She's not here for another dose for another time. I know. There's a woman here. The doctor told her she needs a biopsy for the lump on her back. So, we obviously don't have the facilities to get surgical biopsy here. But we'll make sure that we're continuing to repair. It's on her record. And when she gets to her next stop, wherever that is, whether it's in our custody or out, those records go with her. So you can see Ayanna Presley in that video as well. Um, she is joining along uh, with the group of Congress people in order to uh, see what's really going on in these detention centers. And if you couldn't hear the audio clearly in that video, um, there's a discussion going on about how some of these migrant women who are in that crowded space uh, don't have access to the medication they need. And uh, Castro shared more details in a Twitter thread saying, uh, here's what we found at the El Paso Border uh, Patrol Station number one. Uh, women from Cuba, some grandmothers crammed into a prison like cell with one toilet, but no running water to drink from or wash their hands with, concrete floors, cinder block walls, steel toilets. Uh, he also says many said they had not bathed for 15 days. Some had been separated from children. Some had been held for more than 50 days. Several complained that they had not received their medications, including one for epilepsy. Members of Congress comforted, uh, comforted them when the women broke down. So I just want to avoid confusion. Joaquin Castro is obviously a member of Congress. His brother Julian Castro is running for President and he, Joaquin is actually also the campaign manager for his brother uh, as he runs for president. So he's got two jobs there in a sense. Um, and I think the most interesting part of this story is the fact that United States Congress people have to sneak in cameras to these facilities. Exactly. They are supposed to be our representatives. That is why it's called the House of Representatives. Now, I didn't, those Border Patrol uh, folks, I didn't hire them. And I get it that there's a process, we uh, we elect the officials, the elect officials then set up an executive branch, etc. But people that we elected should have a lot more authority, not less authority. And a lot of these detention facilities are private. So wait a minute, nobody even, they're not even government officials. So private corporations in some instances are saying, no, I will tell the people's representatives what they are allowed and not allowed to do and they'll like it. No, they won't like it, and they, I'm glad he secretly recorded it. I hope they all do. And the and the reason they don't want him recording it is because people have a different point of view when they read a story, and another one when they see it with their own eyes. So if you had read that a that a guy washed up ashore trying to cross the border with his 23 month old baby. You might be touched by that, you might be moved by that. You see the picture, it's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. And that is why uh, when, for example, we were doing the Iraq war, the Bush administration was desperate to not have the media show any of the caskets coming home. 
let alone the bodies, let alone the dead, right? But not even the caskets, because then people might turn against the war. Because that's the reality. That was our boys coming home in caskets. In, in fact, what was the one thing that our government was enraged with Chelsea Manning about? It was that video, right, of the- the Apache uh, helicopter, that's right. Exactly, so it's one thing to read a lengthy, dense article about what happened in that situation. It's a completely different thing to watch the video and to see how our military actually did a strike against Reporters, or, or I'm sorry, first responders in that Both, case. both. Yeah. So you see the reporters, and it's fairly clear that they're reporters. And if you read that, you might think, ah, fog of war, you can't quite tell. But when the first responders come in after the first strike against the reporters, they are clearly, clearly first responders trying to help the wounded and the dead. And we hit them with a bomb and kill them. Because when you see it with your own eyes, it's much worse. That's why the government's like, lock up Chelsea Manning, lock up Snowden, lock up Assange, lock up anyone who will actually bring you information. We got most of the media under control, they're on a leash. But these guys are, at, you know, we can't control them, so we're gonna imprison them. The rest of the media are cowards for not sticking up for those folks, okay? So now in this case, it's incumbent upon congressmen because they won't let the media in. God forbid the American people should find out the horrors that our government is committing. I'm sure that the, that the Germans back in the 1930s wouldn't have let you into their camps either. Wouldn't have let the media in there and maybe people from other parties. And they would have said, "Oh, it is important for the security of the state. But it would have been imperative to get video out of there, wouldn't there? Now back then it would have been pictures. It would have been imperative. And look, I'm not above it. Even, even though I read a thousand articles about this, when I saw the video, I was more affected. I mean, there they are. You, you, they, they look like your aunt. You know, maybe a lot of right wingers don't think that. They're like, oh, they look different than me. I can't relate. To me, they look human. Mm -hmm. That looks like it could be my mom. It could be my aunt. And they're all lying there on concrete. There's no facilities. I mean, at a bare minimum, let alone the lump on the back, let alone the missing medication on the epilepsy, etc. Look at how we're how we're treating them. Just putting them in this tiny little area and making them all lie on the concrete, treating them so inhumanely like this. And then when you hear about the kids who have the outbreak of disease that was created inside the facilities. So it's because it's so unsanitary, that's why the flu began and that's why some of them have died. And you see the video and you connect the two, you go, "Oh, now I get how exactly how that could happen and how everyone in the building knows how bad it is. But none of them are doing anything about it. Right. And as always, the fish rots from the head down. And that's Donald Trump, who probably looks at that video and, and might celebrate, because he wanted to be vicious to them. So I guess mission accomplished. Exactly, and, and I actually wanna clarify something um, or correct something that I said yesterday. Because I had mentioned how, look, Trump is pushing for this friendly relationship with Kim Jong Un because he hasn't really delivered much to his base. I mean, the only thing he's really accomplished is tax cuts for the wealthy. Most of his base doesn't consist of wealthy people, right? And then someone called me out and said, no, 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 his viciousness toward these migrants is something he's delivering to his base. And that person was absolutely right. So if you're watching this right now, thank you for pointing that out. This is something that appeals to, unfortunately, a significant portion of the country. And this is the reason why it's important for us to take a step back and take a good look at ourselves. Because while we talk about how great we are and how we should you know, do these interventionist wars to spread democracy, in reality, we don't care about the lives of other people. We barely even care about the lives of people living in our own country. So look, I, this is the only place in media you'll hear this. Uh, so Republicans support Donald Trump to the tune of 90% uh, of, of the Republican voters. So when they see that video, they see something that they like. So they, it's not like these conditions are new. They've heard about them a thousand times and they've never abandoned Trump over it. It's not the bug, it's the feature. So I, I know the rest of the media is scared to call it what it is, but the Republican voters are the monsters. We, they, they, we live on different planets and they act, people like Joe Biden keep asking me to get along with them. I'm uh, sorry, I'm not going to, I'm gonna fight them yes. and we're gonna win. Because more people are decent and look at that video and are horrified than are people that are indecent. But the indecent is a significant minority of this country. 
somewhere between 25 to 40% of this country are the bad guys. And no other media will tell you that. They're so scared of Republicans. But they, if you look at that video and you think, <laughs> got him, right? You're a bad person. You're the bad guy in the movie. You're the one we have to overcome so that the force of goodness can actually win. So Jesus didn't come in and go, <laughs> the poor, the needy, let's lock them up. Let's make them sleep on the concrete floors. No, he said you help the poor and the needy. So if you think you're being a good Christian by being mean to those people, by being vicious to those people, you're 100% wrong. You're the worst kind of Christian, the worst kind of American, and the worst kind of person. Am I clear enough? We gotta take a break, but when we come back, let's let's save some of that rage for Brian Kilmeade, who has compared these detention camps to house parties. Hmm. We'll be right back. We hope you're enjoying this free clip from the Young Turks. If you wanna get the whole show and more exclusive content while supporting independent media, become a member at tyt.com slash join today. In the meantime, enjoy this free segment. All right, back on the Young Turks. Um, Let's do member comments. Silent approval says the narrative is hard to control when people see video of the truth. And that's exactly right. Um, Nicholas Ward says, and these monsters are charging taxpayers over $700 per person per day for that horrible treatment. Where's the money really going? Another excellent question. You know what kind of an unbelievable hotel room $700 will get you a night? And instead, they're sleeping on concrete floors. But the, somebody's getting paid, somebody's mm-hmm. getting that money. Geo group. Uh, yeah, um, Chris asked a very good question. Uh, AOC went down to see the detention camp, so where was Pelosi? Beginning impeachment hearings? No, Pelosi was trying to figure out how to fundraise off of it. Um, if she's not gonna lead, she shouldn't be the leader. Uh, so that's um, Pelosi. All right, last one, Ginger Jank, which is already funny, says, I'm a cor- <laughs> correctional officer. <laughs> I'm a correctional officer in Minnesota, and I've been a member for a few months now. We treat our offenders very well because we are trained that these aren't bad people, but people who made poor decisions and their punishment is being here. It's not our job to make them suffer more. We are supposed to advocate for offender change. Oh my God, bless your heart. And and the and your supervising officer and the person who runs that facility for actually teaching you the right things, it's actually really encouraging and gives me a little bit of hope that at least some folks are mindful of that and are teaching it and executing it correctly. Look, I think it would be, and I know this is not an easy thing to do, especially if you know if you're the breadwinner in your family and and this if this is risky financially speaking. But I think there are good people who want to do the right thing. And if you guys organize and get together and maybe even do a strike, I think that would be powerful to say the least. You know. Yeah, and now unfortunately, a lot of the border patrol, are based on the Facebook page, don't look like they're uh, object to the conditions. So it it depends on the people, obviously. Last one is actually from Twitter. Uh, Nova Kingway says, "I thought the first lady was so focused on issues affecting children. She seems missing in action when it comes to the atrocities plaguing those poor children in the detention centers." Mm-hmm. But is that funny? Like Melania, Melania. Be best. Yeah. Hash, yeah. There's somebody else that did hashtag be best. That's right. Yeah, where is she? In hiding, of course. Maybe her and Pelosi are lunching together. By the way, uh, some of you pointed this out uh, yesterday. Uh, Nancy Pelosi's son uh, has gone to Mar-a-Lago for New Year celebrations. Gross. Must be so comfy in that club. It definitely doesn't look like those detention centers. They're all very cozy together. So. I'm trying to find a, a clever segue, uh, but I can't think of one. So I'm just gonna tell you about it. Yeah, go. NordVPN, go. All right, protect your <laughs> online activity. You never know who's watching. You never know who's gonna try to hack into what you're doing. You know, you don't want people knowing your business, so go to nordvpn.com slash tyt, because if you use that URL, you're gonna get that fat discount, 75% off for three years, and you get your first month free. That's P-H-A-T fat, okay, yes. fat discount. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Recently, the fine people at Fox News decided to cover the disgusting and unsanitary conditions that migrants are being held in at these detention facilities. The only thing is, they're not referring to them as disgusting or unsanitary. People like Brian Kilmeade are comparing them to house parties. Take a look. 
picture yourself, uh, you have a, a house, family of five, you have a party, you have 30 people over, maybe you have a big party, you have 100 people over, and you have two and a half baths. In the beginning, uh, it would be okay with 30. Then after 100 people, it would be a little bit taxed. Maybe you got to get outdoor facility. Can you picture 5,000? You could have the best facilities in the world, but they are so overstocked. 670,000 have come here illegally already. They can't build tents fast enough. It wasn't their idea to have a wide open border. It was bad uh, asylum rules that allowed this to happen, and then you throw it all on the Border Patrol and you wonder why facilities aren't adequate. If I put, if, uh, if the Four Seasons can hold 4,000, and I put 11,000 in the Four Seasons Hotel, they'd complain about the sanitation, they complain about the food, they complain about the accommodations, because it's not equipped to handle it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not the Four Seasons. Uh, nor is it a, a a party that you went to, but he, and even in his scenario, he says, "Well, you know, for a couple of hours. Remember, some of these people have been held uh, for months mm -hmm. uh, under these conditions." And uh, he mentions it, wide open borders. What is he talking about? There, there are there is no wide open border. Okay, these are people who are coming in seeking asylum, and the way that the system worked previously before Trump is they would get processed. You know, maybe they'd get an ankle bracelet, and then they would show up to their their hearing before a judge to make their case, and either they're granted asylum or they're not. But Donald Trump has made a point to detain every single one of these individuals and put them in these detention facilities, in these camps, in unsanitary conditions. He has decided to to separate the children. Some of the children are still being separated today even though they're not supposed to be. He's holding these people hostage to make a point and he thinks it's serving as a deterrent, but it's obviously not serving as a deterrent. So this is a problem that has been created by the Trump administration and they're trying to make it seem like, no, 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 the, the, Trump is just dealing with a really difficult situation. He's purposely making it difficult. He's purposely torturing these people in these facilities. So one thing that they never note on Fox News, let alone the rest of media is, well, if it was supposed to be a deterrent, uh, how come it didn't work? Um, right now, we're at a record number of people coming into the country uh, for at least the last 13 years. And so the number of people who are coming in in an undocumented way is up and people seeking asylum is up. One of the reasons for that is because Donald Trump, the idiot, in order to quote unquote punish the Central American countries, took away aid from them, mm -hmm. which made conditions much worse in those countries, which then led to more people leaving those countries and trying to come here. And he thinks, <laughs> I showed him, no, you didn't show him anything, you idiot. That you caused more undocumented immigrants. But the people seeking asylum, you've got to stop calling them illegal. I know Fox News is never bothered by facts and reality and the truth. But they're seeking asylum in a legal manner. They enter in a legal manner, they seek asylum in a legal manner. And if they lose their hearing on it, then they go back to their home country. Right. That is legal. Actually, I want to focus on that a little longer because when you hear the Trump administration and right wingers argue that we have a broken immigration system, that we need to fix our broken immigration system, they're specifically referring to the legal means in which people enter the country, seek asylum, and become US citizens, right? So Trump hates the fact, and he said it, he's transparent about it. He hates the fact that there are immigration judges. He doesn't understand the need for them. He thinks we should just turn every single person away regardless of what their situation is back at home. So our current laws indicate that if you are politically targeted, right? If, if you are worried about your own government coming after you and murdering you because you might be critical of your government, well, we have asylum laws that are meant to protect you. So again, it's a legal means in which Migrants come in, and again, they're they're supposed to be seen before a judge, and a judge makes a decision in regard to their asylum case. Trump doesn't want any of that. He wants to kick everyone out. He wants to turn everyone away. And the, what I want to bring up is all you right wingers, and particularly all of you Cuban refugees who came into the country in the 1950s, and you were granted amnesty. How are you going to turn around and look at these migrants who are fleeing? of violence in their own countries and tell them, no, you're not allowed, you're not welcome. No, it, the Cuban Republicans, not all Cubans, obviously, right? And a lot of young Cubans are now uh, very progressive. Sad day for the old timers who are still bitter. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the Cuban Republicans, if you complain about amnesty, you are the world's largest hypocrite. You literally received amnesty. 
And for you to then turn around and go, yeah, but my fellow Latinos, they're, you know, it's not me. What do I care? You know, lock them up in cages and make sure they don't get amnesty. Well, you're a terrible person. And so just live with that. So AOC responded to uh, Kill Me, and I want to share her uh, tweet with you. She, she uh, directed it uh, to Kill Me. It says, Hey, uh, Kill Me, uh, what was. What was the last party you went to where you were locked in a cage under armed guard, drank out of a toilet, and given food of such poor nutritional value for so long that it gave you mouth sores? Actually, there's some chance that he was at such a party. Oh, <laughs> woo, zigger. Okay, I mean, I. <laughs> Yes, yes, the pit bull horns were, were correct in yeah. this context. There's no way that other Fox News personalities like Keith Abloh weren't at parties like that. Uh, so I don't know which ones Kilmeade went to, but mm, you got that analogy out of somewhere. All right, uh, let's move on to our next story. Believe in keeping your heritage alive, including my own Lebanese heritage. But I also believe this is an English speaking nation and pandering to Spanish speaking immigrants was over the top. There is uh, Janine Pirro arguing that uh, the Democratic candidates who were speaking Spanish during the first night of the debates were doing the wrong thing. This is an English speaking country. She was also very frustrated about the fact that uh, several of the candidates raised their hands when they were asked whether they would provide health care to undocumented immigrants. Uh, let's hear her argument there. I believe in keeping your heritage alive, including my own Lebanese heritage. But I also believe this is an English speaking nation and pandering to Spanish speaking immigrants was over the top. Just hold on to your pocketbook. They just put a lien on your money, your savings and your retirement. Everything changed when everyone at that stage raised their hand saying all illegals should be given health care. And by the way, it's not like they haven't already been getting health care in our hospitals and emergency rooms. Remember this? The reforms, the reforms I'm proposing would not apply to those who are here illegal. It's not true. But this is the picture that caused the clowns to lose their way and the American people. If anyone wants to feel the pain of American people, the ones who elect a president and for whom a president actually works, then feel this. Ordinary Americans are confronted at the end of their lives with no health insurance that covers long-term care. Which means when they get out of the hospital, they have to pay for their own care. They are then left out in the cold where they literally have nowhere to turn. Middle-income Americans who every day choose between food and medications don't want to hear about people coming here illegally without a dime in their pockets being rewarded with health care that they have not even paid for. Okay, so we're going to get to the really serious uh, false propaganda that she's spreading about how immigrants take from you but don't give back, right? And so they've got every conservative in the country believing this and a lot of independents too, it's just not true. But first, let's have a little bit of fun. Okay, who listens to her and thinks, now that is a rational person that I can get behind? No. I mean, I'm amazed by conservatives. When they hear her talking like this and they think like, oh, nailed, nailed it, it. <laughs> right? That's the one, that's the one making sense, right? No. And look, you know, on the smaller points, like, so, oh, you know, somebody speaks Spanish, her head blows up. Now, she I, says that speaking Spanish is over the top. She said <laughs> over the top. She said over the top. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> yes. Speaking like this is not over the top, but speaking in a different language is. Okay, so I, I yeah. whatever. Look, was it a little bit of pandering that, that so many of the Democrats spoke in Spanish? I think it was. Yeah, okay. it was cheesy as hell and yeah. we criticized it. Yes, yeah. because we're honest. Uh, I, I preferred it to the German that Trump speaks. Uh, but, uh, but that leads us to the fear, right? But mainly what's Puro doing here? Oh My God, you are not gonna have enough money because of the immigrants. Don't worry about the bankers who robbed you blind during the bailouts. Don't worry about all the corporate donors who took all the money, who give billions yes. of dollars in 
and subsidies to oil companies. Don't worry about any of that. It's the immigrants. That's because because of them. You're going to be stranded when you're old and you're not going to have any money. You're going to be in the streets. No, no, no. First of all, that's not true either. And Medicare protects you. And guess who's against Medicare? Janine Pirro <laughs> and, and the Republicans. It's amazing. So, you know, I have so many things to say about her rant, including actual data and statistics uh, regarding how much of our resources uh, immigrants use versus how much they pay in taxes. And yes, when they're undocumented, they do pay taxes, and I'll tell you how. But first off, um, hashtag Medicare for all, Janine Pirro. Right? I mean, she's talking about how elderly Americans are suffering under this current healthcare system. But she does what people in power, especially people in government, typically do, which is let's hoard the wealth, let's look out for our corporate donors, which are exacerbating the situation, actually causing this problem in America, and let's distract. Americans by pointing to the powerless and using them as a scapegoat for all of their problems. Really, we're gonna blame all of our economic problems and our healthcare issues on the least powerful people, the most powerless people in the country. I mean, it's pathetic. So let's let's go to some of the numbers, okay? Um, first off, when she says that we provide healthcare to uh, immigrants, what she really means, they don't get healthcare coverage. What they do get though is if they are gravely ill or if there's an emergency, we take care of them if they end up in an emergency room because that is the humane thing to do. So she's against that, let's just be clear. She yeah, would yeah. rather see them just die on the streets. No, but look guys, that's not hyperbole, that's literal. So if the alternative to not allowing them into hospitals is if they were in a car accident and they're bleeding out, you leave them on the sidewalk and let them die. So. If you say you're not in favor of that, then you're in favor of the policy that says, yeah, I mean, if they show up at hospitals and they're about, yes, we have to treat them. If you say don't ever treat them, yeah, you say, hey, if a kid got run over in the streets, you think you should just leave him by the curb and let him die there. Okay, but own it, because that's the policy you're right. advocating for. Now, I wanna be clear in that we're talking about federal policy, right? Okay, so um, when it comes to healthcare, there are some states, I believe California is one of them, who uh, will provide healthcare to minors regardless of their immigration status. So that is a states rights issue, but when it comes to the federal government, we are not providing them healthcare uh, other than, hey, if they show up to an emergency room, we do provide um, medical services because we don't wanna watch them die. And by the way, you wanna know who uh, pushed for that? Ronald Reagan, a Republican. And one, one last thing about that, if they got a contagious disease, you want them in the hospital and quarantine. You don't want them out in the streets. It doesn't do you any good, even if you're a bitter old conservative, to have people walking around with contagious diseases. So not admitting them to hospitals is a disastrous idea on every count. And, and, and if you're gonna admit them in the hospitals, which is the logical next step is, well, if they actually got healthcare before that, they wouldn't have to come into a hospital oftentimes in an emergency situation and cost so much more. So now let's go into some of the numbers, right? Because she's making it seem like, oh, all of these Americans who are suffering with no health care, they're suffering because of these, these immigrants. But that is not actually what's happening. So Rand Corporation has done studies on this. Of the $430 billion in national medical spending in 2000, native born residents accounted for 87% of the population, but 91.5% of the spending. Undocumented immigrants, 3.2% of the population, account, accounted for only about 1.5% of medical costs. So let's be absolutely clear right now. Our healthcare is a disaster. It is because of corporations completely influencing our politicians. It has nothing to do with the powerless. It has nothing to do with migrants. Look at the facts, look at the data. Does she provide anything like that? Any facts, any data in her ridiculous over the top rant? Of course not, let me give you more. The lower medical spending is driven by lower utilization of services. Utilization data from Los Angeles County show that many foreign born residents had almost no contact with the former formal healthcare system. Let me give you more. In terms of taxes paid per household, this equates to $56 for healthcare for documented immigrants and $11 for healthcare or emergency Medicaid services for the undocumented. And that's according to research by the Center for American Progress. All right, I'm gonna give you more numbers too. 
uh, and this is about how much they pay into the system. Uh, state revenues collected from undocumented immigrants exceeded what the state spent on social services provided to these immigrants, such as healthcare and education, by $424.7 million in the year 2005. So that's just one example. So when they say, oh, they're taking from us, that's literally the exact opposite of the truth. According to analysis, in the year 2005, a representative year overall, they in the state issue in in the states they put in 424 million more than they took out from state services. So the correct rant by Janine Pirro would be: Can you believe these native-born Americans riding off of these poor undocumented immigrants who keep paying into the system, but because they're undocumented, cannot get that money out? But of course, they're not going to do that rant because that would be true, and it wouldn't help them fear monger. Exactly. I have more. I would just uh, uh, if let's go to uh, graphic four here. The National Research Council concluded that immigrants will pay on average eighty thousand dollars per capita more in taxes than they will use in government services during their lifetimes. The Social Security Administration, for example, estimates that workers without valid Social Security numbers contribute seven billion dollars in Social Security tax revenues and roughly one and a half billion dollars in Medicare taxes. Annually, they put that money in and they never get it back out. So pause, I, I wanna add a little bit of commentary to that because why is it that even when Republicans have control of Congress and they have a Republican president, they don't push for immigration reform. They don't push for mass deportations of undocumented immigrants in America. It's because our economy would suffer. Let's keep it real. They're paying taxes for services that they will never get to take advantage of. And I mean, that's just one way they actually help prop up our economy. Of course, there's you know the farmers who desperately need them because Americans won't take their jobs. Even when farmers increase the wages and offer all sorts of benefits, Americans just won't take the jobs. Don't believe me, read the stories. I'm talking about farmers in the middle of the country who have raised their, their wages to Fifteen to twenty dollars an hour, and Americans won't take the jobs. All right, but most importantly, guys, whenever you see this Republican lie, because it is spread wide and far, just counter with this simple fact that I just told you. It's from the National Research Council. There's no question about it. On average, every undocumented immigrant is paying eighty thousand dollars over a lifetime more than they're getting out in services. So they are contributing to the economy more than they are taking out. And let alone, by the way, let alone the impact that they're having on the economy overall, the farms and, and all the other places that they're working. This is just in terms of government services, what they pay in and what they get out. So it's just not true that they're milking off of us. If anything, we are largely abusing them and taking their tax dollars, sales tax, payroll tax, all the other things we've talked about and giving them almost no services in return. Something to think about as we go to break, but when we come back, a really great poll on Medicare for All from Morning Consult.